Hello fellow key shooter, I'm Magnus Kuxuir and I'm back with a new tutorial on a what's new in Keyshot 9. It's going to be focusing a lot on soft bodies like fuzz and real cloth and so on. Uh, before we dive into that, however, I have a couple of announcements that I'd like to make. First one being that this and the next tutorial will be uh, part of the main assignment or task for the next week's Render Weekly. Secondly, uh, I've teamed up with the maybe the best key shooter out there, namely the pioneer Espen Oxholm. Now I know most of you who work in Keyshot, I mean if you ever open Keyshot you know Espen, but if you haven't, please do yourself a favor and go check his Instagram and YouTube account to get inspired. So me and Espen have been working together to create a full-blown Keyshot 9 course that will be uploaded to Gumroad in the near future. And if you're interested in that, please look in the description below where I will be adding a link to a form to sign up for an early bird discount on the full package that will include tutorials and scenes and whatever uh, in-depth experiences we have with the new features in Keyshot 9. Uh, in the description I will also uh, provide links to Espen's channels and of course the Render Weekly. So, let's start learning. So. We'll start off by focusing on the new Keyshot 9 material, Real Cloth. Now, Real Cloth is a fully procedural new material that allows you to generate great looking fabrics down to the smallest fiber details. Now, in case you are unfamiliar with the term procedural, it basically means that you won't have to rely on texture images to generate great looking fabric materials, as it is fully computer generated. However, this material comes with its certain challenges, especially if you have a CAD background like myself. For example, for the cushion in this bench concept, I want to utilize real cloth to generate a convincing fabric material. I've just used a common thickening command on the underlying geometry and added some edge blends or fillets on the sides of that solid. So let's try to import this into a key shot scene. Now we'll just go for the default settings and make sure I'm adding it into a new model set. And it looks like it imports fine, so I'll isolate the cushion by right clicking it and choose show only. So now that we're looking at the isolated cushion model, I'm just going to double click it and change the material from diffuse and to real cloth. Now, kind of immediately you can notice that the, the mapping of this texture is all messed up. The scales and the seams are just all over the place. An immediate downside uh, that we can take from this is that real cloth only accepts UVs as a texturing technique. And based on our patchy geometry from NX, and probably a lot of you already knows that it doesn't appreciate UVs that much. So at this point, we have three options. You can either wait for the UV unwrap tool, which is expected to arrive with Keyshot 9.1. Uh, number two, you can use a third party application to model up the soft bodies. And that's something I'll show you in the second part of this tutorial. Thirdly, you can remodel the cushion to aim for a single surface representation of the cushion, which is doable for a simple situation like this. That makes the foundation for something I like to call local UV mapping. Since I know you guys are working on a broad range of modeling tools, I'm just going to do this really quick to demonstrate the effect in Keyshot. So what I want to do is to extract existing curves from our solid. That means I can use these to do a singular sweep and remain very close to the original geometry. I'm choosing the lower section here mainly because the start and end point of our sweep might cause a seam in Keyshot, so I'm just making sure that that stays out of sight for the renders. Now the curves themselves might look invisible at this point, but that's because it just inherits the color of that solid. Now 
So now I'm using the swept tool with the extracted two curves as a section and a guide. And that's all there is to it. Now we have a singular surface representation of our cushion without any patches. And it's ready for our real cloth material using local UV mapping. So now let's just save this and import our updated model into Keyshot. Now since I've created a new model for the cushion, it probably won't update the material, but at least it will automatically replace our previous model. And we'll isolate the cushion as we did last time and change it to real cloth. And now we can see that we have a well distributed texture flowing over the surface as intended. Before we dive into the real cloth parameters, I want you to bring you on to a little hidden secret. Originally, the real cloth was included with the displacement option, but it wasn't deemed quite mature for release yet. However, you're still able to use it by enabling experimental features. Just as a disclaimer, uh, Keyshot does not officially support experimental feature, so by doing this, you're doing it at your own risk. But personally, I think it's a little bit too awesome to just ignore. I also know that they're working on a replacement for this feature for future updates, which is something to be aware of if you're generating legacy data for your company. In your Keyshot documents, there is a XML document called KS9 settings, which can be opening using Notepad or any other preferred editor you might have. In this document, search for experimental and change the Boolean for that line from false to true. Now all you have to do is to restart Keyshot and you'll have some extra settings enabled for your real cloth. So, so I've cheated a little bit here with the wood on the bench, so let me just enable that. So we have a little better notion on the colors as we start adding, uh, sorry, editing the uh, real cloth material. So let's start by looking at some of the real cloth parameters. Now I won't be going into depth of each of these in this tutorial as there is a lot, but let's look at the basics first. First off, you have warp and the weft. So what that means is that it's considered the X and the Y direction of the yarns. It might be tricky to keep track of which is which, but it's identified initially by its color code. I like to change the other one to a total different color so I have a better overview of the different two. Next up, let's look in at adjusting the scale. Now I'm going to put in 0.8 millimeter here, which seems to look okay. Uh, I feel like the texture looks a little bit too uniform and we can rough that up a little by adding distortion. Now, if we insert two, you can clearly see it, the, the effect as it adds these random ripples in the yarn. Uh, it might be a bit too much for my taste, so 0.5 0.5 seems to be a nice subtle effect. I also feel that the cloth comes a little bit too dark considering the colors we picked, so I want to remove some of the dark areas in between the yarn, warp and weft. Now you can do that by selecting Edit Weave Pattern. Again, here's a few parameters we'll have a closer look at later, but for now we'll change the width of the warp and weft to have a tighter fabric. Click apply to apply your changes and just close this dialog for now. In the warp and weft sections, we have a parameter called color variation. Now when you add value here, it randomly desaturates yarn thread, which is an effect I, I kind of like for this material. Now even though this looks kind of cool already, I want to bring it up a notch. So let's open up our material graph. 
uh, I'll right click an empty space and add a brushed material node. If you're unaware, if you select the node and use the shortcut C on your keyboard, you can isolate the look of that very node. Since we already have a UV friendly geometry, I'm going to use that texturing technique for this material and lower the scale. Now I want this brush material to create some more variation in the warp direction, so I'll start by rotating it 90 degrees to match the warp. And I also want a petroleum, petroleum like blue, so I'll add a blue color to one of the brushed colors. Next I'll duplicate that node and deselect sync so it doesn't sync with my existing brush node. I want this node to follow the weft direction so I'll change the rotation to 0 degrees. So I'll adjust scale slightly for this guy. And let's do some color adjustment just to create a slightly more variation. Then we'll finally bring it all together to the real cloth node to see how it looks. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now. So let's just wrap this guy up by adding some softness or aka some flyaway fibers. So I've just changed the camera angle here so we have a slightly better idea of what we're doing when we're adding flyaway fibers. Unlike using the fuzz node as Espen will be showing you, the flyaway fibers in real cloth will by default look almost invisible. That's because the density and parameters are calculated from the scale of the texture. So at the, uh, so at the 0 0.8 mm scale that we have, we'll have pretty small looking fibers. In any case, when you hover your mouse over each of these parameters, you'll get a short explanation of what it does. So the best tip I can give you uh, on flyaway fibers is, and I'm a little sorry to say this, experiment. In my case, these values are the result of tweaking it for around 10 minutes, and while there could probably be pushed even a little bit more, that's what uh, I gave it in 10 minutes worth of tweaking. So you're going to push that generate the execute gen geometry node a lot to kind of see how it develops. Just keep in mind not to allow the tool to add too many curves, which you can constrain with max curves at the bottom. This tool will add a lot of geometry as it does with fuzz, and it might be heavy on your memory consumption. So that's it for this tutorial. Now in the next video I'll be taking the soft body modeling up a notch by showing you a workflow going from CAD to Marvelous Designer to create even better looking soft geometry. Remember to sign up to our form below to receive news on the What's New in Keyshot course.